Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Hearns Matchroom Sport now proudly presents 12 rounds of boxing international super middleweight contest. Sponsored by 666 Pet, JD Sports, and Scott's Menswear. And we buy anyhouse.com. We are live on Sky Sports Box Office and exclusively live in the USA on AWE, a wealth of entertainment. All the officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Stood in charge, Mr. Al Hayes, our Chief Inspector, Mr. Steve Furness. Timekeeper is Jamie Kirkpatrick. When the action begins, the judges in charge are Steve Gray of Fleetwood, John Keane of Wellingborough, and Dave Paris of Leeds. Well, the bell rings and the action begins. The referee in charge of the action from Doncaster, Mr. Howard Foster. So, here we go. Introducing to you. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks, trimmed with gold, weighed in at 12 stone and 1 pounds, a 23 fight record, 20 wins, 13 inside, the schedule distance, 2 losses, 1 draw, former world title challenger, and the NABF super middleweight champion from Mexico, Marco Antonio Pereba. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing the purple trunks, trimmed with grey, gold and silver. Weighed in the leather stone, 13 pounds and a 20 fight record, 19 wins, 13 inside, the schedule distance and just one defeat. The former British and undefeated European champion and former WBC silver super middleweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, a member of the British Empire. Let's get the action of the way 12 rounds of boxing in the super middleweight division. Okay guys, both of you both in the dressing room. We both know I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. And both of you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both, touch gloves. Good luck. So a very important night for James DeGale. Can't afford a slip up here. And talking to Jim McDonnell, his trainer. The plan is come out, set a fast tempo because they believe Perry Ban fades the longer a fight goes on. And they'll also target the body as well. And Perriban has had to shift a few pounds this week. He's lost 10 pounds since Wednesday. I wonder if that might be a factor the longer this goes on. But this is a man, remember, who has never been stopped and has only been beaten at very high level and certainly has a lot of ambitions of his own. This is hardly some washed-up guy that's coming in just for a payday at 30 years old. He knows what's at stake for him as well. Perivan knows that he can't afford a bad performance tonight, otherwise he'll drop right down the order. That wasn't the smartest left-hand lead that I just saw there from De Gale. He reached with it, left himself wide open. That was a little bit better than short chopping right hand. I'm just wondering how interested Perivan is. He missed the scales, he looks a little bit fleshy, to be honest. He's travelled halfway across the world, so I hope that if he has brought some ambition with him, he can cause problems for the Gale. But uh, we'll see how that unfolds. That's good stuff from him, but blocked. Ah, oh, good right hook from the Gale. The Gale's a different fighter, I think, now. I think he's suddenly taken a tumble to himself, what the public expect of him. Well, he's also fit physically as well. He uh, has had a problem with his what they call in medical terms Gilmore's groin it basically affects your mobility and, uh, he's been treated by Gary Lewin the, uh, the Arsenal and England physio to get that fixed he's an Arsenal fan himself of course and people close to him say ever since he's managed to get that corrected he is a different fighter he's extremely fit and run all day very confident uh, he certainly sees himself as a world champion in waiting well, he's not hanging about, this is a real positive start from him. He switched to orthodox a couple of seconds ago, I don't know what that was about, he doesn't do that too often. That is a kind of big hopeful left-hand lead he throws at times. He's, he's switching to orthodox again there, Nick. No, I mean, the, yeah, the southpaw stance is what caused this guy nightmares, so why doesn't he <laughs> use it? He's really digging in punches here, he's really... Putting the meat into them. 
Sarah not exactly looking like a guy that wants to be in there at the moment as De Gale continues to unload. And he is not messing around here, James De Gale. Well, what I like about this, Nick, he's not waiting to find out what Ferraban brought with him. I was wondering what kind of ambition he would have. I thought maybe he'd take the first couple of rounds to find out, but full credit, De Gale's going right down to work his landing. Big punches straight off. Ferraban a little bit obvious with what his plan was there. He's in the southpaw jab, uh, De Gale, he just wants to land big punches, he, you can see him setting up the left hand, you can see exactly what he has in his mind. Well, it worked a treat with Brandon Gonzalez last time. Just relax, can you breathe out of the top? Hey, James, with him, he's looking for the right hand all the time. Relax, he's looking for the right hand all the time. So be smart like you are. Well, a happy corner, but I would tell him maybe to have a little thought before he throws those big wild left hands. The short chopping ones were impressive. But some of the big hopeful left hand swings could leave his chin hanging out, but it was an impressive opening round. As I say, he didn't wait to find out what Perabran, Perabran brought with him. Straight down to work, pretty much dominated the opening round. That's the kind of hopeful left hand lead, but untidy, ungainly, and off balance when he throws it. Round two, round two of this 12 rounder. We were talking to Jim McDonnell after that Brandon Gonzalez fight that I was just referring to, and uh, they thought they'd catch Gonzalez half asleep, who'd been brought in far too late from the West Coast. You catch him dozing. And the plan was to start fast, discourage this fella, see if they could bomb him out of there. And it's interesting, isn't it? People talk about old Terraban fades. This is a guy that's never been stopped. He can't fade that badly. Yeah, he started this round positively, Terraban, but uh, full credit to the Gale, he stood with him. Didn't back off. So I wonder will he start using his skills as well as his power? Yeah, I think Terabain just sent a message uh, in the first couple of seconds of the second round there that he's here for work. Must be difficult to maintain focus as well for De Gale because he's chomping at the bit. He wants Carl Proch. He wants that IVF belt or he wants a shot at it. Oh, of course. Keeping everyone waiting while he works out what he wants to do, as is a champion's right. But then there's talk as well of maybe De Gale and George Groves going at it again. But of course, Groves is lining up a WBC title fight. Here he is loading up once again, but Perriban a bit cute for that. Yeah, the experience of Perriban got him out of trouble there. No, Perriban really now looking like he fancies the job. Of course, there is a danger that if he does waste a lot of early energy here, De Gale doesn't get rid of Perriban, how will that affect him down the stretch? Looking for the body there, Perriban. Orthodox again. He landed a good job from the orthodox stance, <laughs> right enough there. I just worry about the way he reaches with his punches, he got away with it there, which is good. But reaching with punches, you're off balance. You're, you're falling. You're falling in after the punches. You want good balance. You want good leverage in the punch. You don't want to be falling in behind them. Spending a lot of time. Now he's, you know, he's, no, he's stayed in all. He stayed in the orthodox stance. I've got to say, he's spending a lot of time in the orthodox stance. Here in this second round. Well, I think he's uh, saying to Perriban at the moment, ah, you're not the only tough guy in here. So, so this is good, you know, he's sending out a message. That, again, I'm worried about those long, sweeping, kind of off balance punches. He wants to tighten things up, shorten these punches. He's still, good round for him. Put a lot of work in already here, James DeGale. 
Yeah, I mean, I just worry, you know, sometimes you, you, when your punches are as long as that, when they don't land, you know, you can oh, find yourself in some trouble. I don't know if Perriban's cute enough to capitalise on it, but I think the message is he's showing Perriban how tough he is, how physically strong he is, and uh, that's maybe not a bad plan in the early stages of this one. Round three, then, of this 12-rounder. Seems to go along deck for the IBF title. That will go up in smoke if he slips up here. He gets Marco Antonio. Oh, he's oh, got him with a big left hand. And again, down goes the tough guy. Paraban in real trouble. Doesn't know where he is. Stop and Buster stopped it right there. Explosive from James De Gale. He wanted to make a statement. That was a statement right there. Yeah, well, well I tell you, the big long left hand I was worried about, Nick, that's exactly what got the job done. I mean, I thought maybe a standing eight count uh, for a man with the experience of Terraban, but to be honest, I think at the end of the eight count, I think uh, referee Foster was still having stopping the fight. But uh, Terraban got back onto his feet. The eight count, I think, but he's not complaining too much. He's shrugging his shoulders, but I think he accepts how badly hurt he was. Yeah, well, he's throwing them wild, he's throwing them long, but obviously he's throwing them hard as well. That's a terrific result to have on your card. It really is. That's a message to Carl Froch upstairs. That's a message to George Groves in the dressing room backstage. And that's a message to any other super middleweights in the world. This guy means business. Here's how it happened. Yet yeah, long. Perriban saw the punch coming. He tried to brace himself to take the punch. It's not a punch that he caught him that he didn't see coming. He saw it, but could not do anything about it. Then the second follow-up shot caught him a little bit high, but it was equally as hard. Well, I suppose the fact that uh, Foster, he waved it off while he was on the floor, so he didn't have the option of the, of the eight count. But to be honest, the, the state he was in, I don't think the standing eight would have made any difference. Those were two terrific punches and uh, finished off a real tough guy. Just yep. what James DeGale needed. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Jamie Kirkpatrick records a time of 30 seconds of the third round. Referee Howard Foster has stopped the contest with Perriban in no position to continue. Your winner from Harsden, London, England, Chanty James De Gale. Well, there will be some conversations, I'm sure, about whether that stoppage was premature or not, but uh, don't expect James De Gale to be too bothered by that. He wanted to send a message tonight. He has done so loud and clear. Well, James, I know you wanted to make a statement this evening. Is that exactly what you've just done? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Uh, this guy's never been stopped before. He's boxed for a world time. And Zach, listen, Zach Obiko couldn't stop him. I outclassed him. I've got to watch it back. But uh, I was feeling good and I was just getting warmed up. I was looking for that left hand over the top. That's my shot at the minute. Nailing people in the sparring and in the ring. Feeling good and yeah, yeah, man, I was just getting warmed up. I'm saying, I'm telling you, I'm one of the best out. I'm telling you, seriously, I'm just telling you. What about the timing of the stoppage? As I say, I'm going to have to look look back. I hit him, he went down, he was stumbling all over the place. Listen, that ref's a good referee. He's seeing the guy's eyes, he couldn't go on, so we, so we had to stop it. But I'm going to have to look back, Ed. So what happens now? Do you stay out here and watch George Groves, or are you looking ahead for the IBF title I'm shot? Gonna go back, put my tracks on, come out here and see what happens. Don't worry about ugly kid, don't worry about him. I am managing challenger for the IBF world title. Make oh, Froch is up there listening. Making history, and that's it. Ed is here. He's going to deliver the world title, I know he is. Early part of next year, and we're making history, that's it. Sky Sports, Team Chunky, that's it. Eddie Hearn, match room, boom. Eddie, what will happen next then for James? He's definitely fighting for the world title next, you know. Carl's up there, he's got till the end of December to make his decision. You know, talk to wrong game with Chavez. There's huge fights for James to go. Of course, the Carl Froch fight is a great fight. The George Groves fight is a great fight. But one thing's for sure, his next fight has to be for the world title. You know, Carl will make his decision before the end of December. But whatever happens, 
he fights for the world title next, whether against Carl Froch or the next in line. James, do you have a message for Carl up there? <sighs> Listen, he's a fighting man, and I don't really, you know, I don't really want to say it, but he's been a bit of a coward. But I like Carl Froch. It's hard for me to like disrespect him but it feels to me he don't want to fight me so listen it's either give up the title or fight me it's simple i can't disrespect a man that's achieved so much but he's being a bit of a coward